All right, there are a couple of more problems that we, not problems, a couple more properties that we want to talk about when it comes to multiplication. And this opens up so much to us. Now, when we had addition, we talked about the commutative property of addition. But there is a commutative property for multiplication as well. The commutative property says that if you have a times b, that's the same thing as having b times a. If you flip the order of the factors, your answer is the same. Just like with adding, if you flip the order of the add-ins, the answer is still the same. And then we also have the associative property of multiplication. And what the associative property does is that it says that regrouping doesn't change your answer. So if I have A times B first and then times C, well that's the same thing as having A times B times C. So if you multiply these two factors first or the first two factors first, it doesn't matter. Your answer is going to be the same. So when we combine these guys together, when I combine these guys together, this tells me that order the order doesn't matter when everything is multiplication. Order doesn't matter. Now I want us to go back and look at an example that we've already done. Okay. We did we did the example that was two times negative 7 times negative 4. You guys remember that? Now, we already know what the answer is because we've already done it. What I want you to see is that if you rearrange these factors, you still get the same answer. Now, you could do 2 times 7, or 2 times negative 7, and we got negative 14 the first time, right? right? But then, maybe I don't know 14 times 4. But here's what I can do. I can rearrange this. I could say this. I could say 2 times negative 4 times negative 7 just by swapping swapping these two factors because we said multiplication the order doesn't matter right so if I do it this way what's 2 times negative 4 negative 8 and then negative 8 times negative 7 is what Positive 56, right? So 8 times 7 lands on that multiplication table chart that we had from before, right? Whereas 14 times 4 is somewhere, it's somewhere off of that, right? So I can rearrange things and I can create a multiplication problem that I'm much more comfortable doing. Do you have to do it this way? No. But I want you to see that there are there are some useful things about this. For example, this is the kind of problem that I like to give my students in my O308 class, something that looks like this. 5 times 767 times 2. You can make your life difficult if you want to. Or you can rearrange these factors, put them in an order that makes a lot more sense to you. Do you know five times, bless you, do you know five times 767 off the top of your head? No. no. Go with what you do know. Since this is all, this is all multiplication here, I'm going to rearrange this. How do you think I'm going to rearrange this? I can do five times two first and then times 767. Why would I do five times two first? It's a lot easier. What's 5 times 2? Ten. That's 10. And then I love multiplying times 10 because I just have to do what? So my answer is what? 7,670. Rearrange to make your life easier.
Are you with me on that? All right. There's another property that we see with multiplication, and that's the distributive property. So the distributive property will distribute multiplication across addition. So you have to have something that looks like this. Okay. Notice how the A is right next to the parentheses. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. When the A is right next to the parentheses, that indicates what? Multiple. Multiplication. Now, the distributive property says that if you have addition or form of, form of addition here, you take this factor of A, it multiplies times both of the pieces that are inside of both terms, the B and the C. So you have this. You have A times B plus A times C. That's what the distributive property says. And you can use this in so many ways to make your life easy, but you have to be paying attention and you have to be willing to experiment. I mean, mathematically, not in like, not 60s and 70s experiment. If I have this, if I have nine times 10 plus two, you have a couple of ways of working this. If you use the distributive property, this says take the 10 Multiply it times both, did I say 10? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can edit that. Uh, take the nine and multiply it times the 10 and multiply it times <coughs> the two. So what's nine times 10? 90. 90 and what's nine times two? 18. That's 18. And then 90 plus 18 is? It's 108. Now, that is not the only way to do this problem. This is using that distributive property. The other way of doing this, parentheses create groups. These are called grouping symbols. And so it groups together 10 plus 2. So the order of operations that we'll be talking about later would say you can do 10 plus 2 first. And if you do 10 plus 2 first, what do you get? You get your 12, and then 9 times 12 is it's still 108. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. Notice how we did 10 plus 2 to get 12, and then I did 9 times 12 to get 108. You see that? You can use this process and actually work backwards a little bit if you want to. For example, if I have this, if I have 8 times 14. I could do 8 times 14, or I could look at it this way. A lot of times, I'll take 14, and I'll write this as 10 plus 4. Now, why would I do that as 10 plus 4? <coughs> yeah, 10 plus 4 is 14, but why would I, why would I break it up? Because... I, 8 times 10 and 8 times 4 are things that I know much more readily than 8 times 14. 8 times 14 is not really one of those things that I studied, right? So I can do this. If I use the distributive property, what do I get? I get 80 plus what? 80 plus 32, right? 8 times 4 is... Th Am I doing my math right or am I just... You guys are messing with me today. <laughs> 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 4 is 32. And then what's 80 plus 32? Because I'm adding and I've got a number of the ends and zeros, so that should be easy enough. What is the answer? The answer is 112. Could you have done 8 times 14 the normal way? And still got 112. Yes. But if we can open up our minds to see numbers in a different way, then we might be able to do some funner stuff. <laughs>